What's up everyone? All right, so I've got horrible news. Today is a Red Day recap. The first Red Day recap for 2019. So my 23 consecutive Green Day hot streak has ended. And you know what? It's only, well, it's only noon time. I could try to keep trading, but I'm down three grand. It's not the smart thing to do. As nice as it is to have a really long consecutive day hot streak, you gotta know when to throw in the towel. I'm down three grand, I'm gonna just let it be what it is. It's been a great month. I'm up still, even after today, $46,000 on the month. I've got no reason to complain. Red days are, they're not a big deal. Losing trades are not a big deal. I lose 30% of the time. I've got about 70% accuracy. So, you know, I lose on a regular basis and some days you just catch a couple more losers than winners and that's, that's okay. So, you know, I, I hear something hitting the scanner, but I'm not gonna think about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna mute that scanner and I'm just gonna do a couple other things. We've got some inner circle students that I'm gonna have one-on-one -on -one sessions with this afternoon, try to work with them, get their trading in a really good place. And I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. So as usual, any questions, any comments, leave them below. Give me a thumbs up for doing the Red Day recap. You know these days aren't fun, but I know you'll learn a lot from them. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning, live 9, 9.15, pre-market analysis on YouTube. All right, see you guys then. everyone so we're gonna do a midday market recap today is the 19th day of 2019 uh, for as far as trading is um, concerned and unfortunately today's gonna be my first red day of the year I just don't think it's worth trying to uh, go through what I went through yesterday just to get myself to break even uh, you know I'm I'm disappointed I uh, started the morning going into the red uh, by about $1,000 on BOXL. I made back money on JVA, got myself up about $1,500 on the day, and then had a nice $1,100 winner on OCX and was up about $2,400, $2,300 on the day. Pretty good. And then I gave it all back on OCX, got myself down to break even, and then I lost three grand on MDGS, down three grand. So, you know, it's been a really great hot streak, uh, 22 consecutive green days. I'm happy with 23 actually, 23 consecutive green days, um, about $61,000 of profit over those last 23 days and down about 3,000 today. Uh, you know, the problem you, with yesterday is that I, I was so fixated on not closing the day red that I just... I got a lot more aggressive than I really would like to have. I traded a lot longer into the day than is a good idea for me. And although I did manage to come out of the day green, um, you know, everything I had to do to get there, I don't know if it was really worth it. At the end of the day, I was only down 800 bucks and I worked so hard to get myself out of the red, it was really silly. Um, and today, you know, on um, when I went back to break even at that point, I should have just stopped and I was frustrated. I mean, I, I was just plain frustrated and I took that last trade on MDGS and just totally, you know, threw in the towel with that $3,000 loss. So, you know, at that point, I'm below my $2,000 daily max loss. Um, I really shouldn't keep trading. It would be breaking a rule to keep trading at this point. And uh, the reality is it's probably not worth it. There's nothing that I'm seeing moving. There's nothing that looks really strong. You know, if I saw something that was going parabolic, something that was really, really strong, I might think, all right, you know, maybe I'll keep an eye on this. Yesterday, that was ABCO. I had a lot of confidence that it was gonna go higher and I was right on it. It uh, did end up breaking the VWAP and getting all the way up to 925, former runner status, you know, lots of potential there. And OCX today, um, you know, I, I just don't think it has that same potential. I, I really don't. Um, you know, is it going to go a little higher? Maybe, but it's been grinding, and I don't think it's one that I'm going to hit a home run on to the tune of $3,000, which is what I would need to do to get myself out of the hole. So at this point, I'm just going to say, you know what? Let's just break the hot streak and not be as, um, you know, kind of fixated on trying to stay green 
because if anything, it's making me more emotional and more aggressive than is really a good idea. It's better just to have that $800 red day and then, you know, come back the next day centered and focused than to spend hours trying to trade myself out of a hole, getting really aggressive on strategies I don't usually trade. It just doesn't really make sense. So, you know, this is one of those areas where, um, you know, sometimes uh, you are your biggest obstacle to walking away green. And uh, today I was up 2,500 bucks and I gave it back. So why don't we start by looking at the watch list uh, that I had this morning. Um, so this morning we started with um, OCX as our leading gapper. Let me go to the time frame historical date, 922 is fine. So OCX was our leading gapper. Um, well, that's weird. What What's this about? Um, this isn't correct. Let's try doing the historical scan for 9.20 a.m. There we go. Okay, OCX, there we go. So gapping up 123%. This is the pre-market chart. But honestly, at this time, I was just like, you know what? It's already got 2 million shares of volume. It's a 40 million share float stock. I'm really not that interested in it. I'm just gonna leave it alone. The bell rings, it kind of goes sideways and then rips up here to 533. So this is where I ended up taking my trades on it. Um, made about, uh, let's see, right in here, I took, um, oh, I actually wasn't really gonna go over this trade first, but whatever, it's fine. So on this one, um, it squeezes up and gets halted right here at 533. Remember, I'm, I'm using my TAS market profile um, boxes on here. So these are an add-on indicator for um, e-signal, you can see um, taswarriors.com. Um, this is where you can get them. So you authenticate um, with this little app that you install on um, your computer right here, and then you're authorized. And from that point, you can have these turned on. So these help you visualize support and resistance levels with a little bit more clarity. Um, now what we've got here is all of a sudden it squeezes up and it hits a high of 533 and then it pulls back, or sorry, it pulls back, but it gets halted. It's halted uh, at 945 and when it resumes, I jumped in basically as soon as it resumed at, um, let's see, where was it? Uh, let me sort my trades here. So my trade on this one, um, this was a smaller one. I was in with um, uh, only 3,000 shares at 524, but sold at 549, 540, 549, 559, and made about $700 on that trade. I then got back in at 540, which was right here for the first one minute candle to make a new high. Target was high of day. We didn't get quite the move to high of day, but I had 6,000 shares and I sold that at 50, 59, and 49. So, you know, that ended up being another uh, 500 bucks. And with that, I was up 1,200 on the name, which is pretty good. So I'm up $1,200 as of right here, two trades. And then I got back in it right here. One more trade, 6,000 shares. I'm in it at um, 95 and 99 for the break over six. It hit 601 and within like 10 seconds, drops back down to 575 and i was like whoa and then boom it flushes to 550 and all the way to 537. just like that lost 2500 bucks i went from being up 1200 to down 1200 on the name and with that i went from being uh, up about 2500 on the day to up only 178 dollars on the day which was so discouraging um, and of course to see it bounce like right back up but the fact is, um, you know, you don't hold something from 99 all the way down to 37. You know, if you're holding it to 37, then where are you going to stop out? You know, it's just it's just not smart to do that. So, uh, you know, this was just a really disappointing one because I didn't expect it. I, I thought max loss was like maybe 580, you know, 15 cents. I wasn't expecting a 60 cent drop that quick. So that one caught me off guard. 
Um, it popped back up, but look, it kept doing these really big drops. So this one has been, I would say, pretty hard uh, to trade. I mean, this has just been kind of difficult. So disappointed on that. Ended up losing $1,200 total on the name. That was off the watch list, and I just didn't trade it as well as I would have liked. Um, the other one off the watch list, JVA, right here. I'm up 2400 on that one. So I'll go over that one in a second. Uh, that was my second trade of the day. You can see it right here. First trade of the day was BOXL, which was also on the watch list right here. 2.4 million share float, 200,000 shares of pre-market volume, a headline this morning. 200 moving average at 345, but I thought it was at least worth a scalp for a break of this pre-market bull flag, right? Nice little bull flag, pre-market top at 320. So on this one, I jumped in at um, 318 for the break over the pre-market, the top of the pre-market flag. And, you know, it drops all the way down to 290. Pops back up to three, right here, 307. I get out break even. Uh, sorry, I got out, got out at um, $3. So I didn't sell at 290. I let it come back up, got out at $3. So on 6,000 shares, I lost about 1,000 bucks. First trade out of the gates, boom, right into the red. And, you know, with the gap and go strategy, this is certainly the risk. Um, my accuracy is about 70%, 68%. So this is just one of those times where it just had a wall here. It could not break that level and it dropped and, and came back down. So I'm bummed about that. I'm disappointed. I would have loved to have had that um, be my first winner. Target was um, 330, 340 but we didn't get that breakout. So started in the red. JVA was the second one I was watching. On this one, I got um, a little bit aggressive as soon as it started to squeeze up in this first candle. Uh, it squeezed up to 570, and when I saw it coming up, I jumped in, I pressed the buy button at 67, 70, 76, 83, and yeah, 83. So I actually took 12,000 shares of this. I was pretty aggressive right out of the gates um, when we started to see it popping up. I think I was actually in on uh, this candle here. But anyways, it hits a high of 618, and then it comes all the way back down. I'm gonna turn this um, indicator off here that colors the candles, just so we can look at um, the color of these candles. So, so it goes up here like this, it pulls back, I'm still holding. Uh, looking for that one minute candle to make a new high. It comes up to 99 right here, doesn't break. I sell on the ask, sell on the bid, and I bail out the rest of it. It ends up dropping down. It's no good, doesn't hold up. All right, well, on the five minute, um, you know, it's it's still kind of consolidating. So I end up taking another trade where I get back in it um, right here for the break back over high a day, 616, looking for a high, a break over the pre-market high of 620 doesn't happen, I stop out of that and lose like 300 bucks. And then I get back in one more time right here and it goes up to 634 and it doesn't work, it comes back down and I lose another like 300 bucks. So on this one I had three trades, one winner and two losers. These two losers on both of them I was green but I didn't take the profit, I was looking for a bigger win. I was looking for a move up towards 650 and we just didn't get it. And then of course here you can see this pretty big drop uh, that's on the five minute chart. It really failed and um, you know that was disappointing. So that was on JVA, uh, but it put me up after BOXL uh, uh, $1,500. Or I was up about $1,800 and then after my losses, I was up about $1,400. Then I had my OCX trade, $1,200 of profit there. That put me up $2,500 and then I lost it all on that trade. HYRE, jumped into this one. It hit our scanner, high day Momo scanner. Uh, that was, let's see, where was it? Um, right around here, hits the scanner. I jump into it and look at this. I mean, this is the type of, this is the type of stuff we were dealing with today. So I jumped into this, it hits a high of 75. Uh, ends up coming all the way back down and got back out break even $28 of profit. And then we had MDGS. MDGS hits the scanner. I jumped into it at uh, 286 was my average. It hits a high of 320. I stopped out all the way down here at 250. Lost 3,000 bucks. 
I didn't trade CHEK. I was watching it and look at this one right here. A little consolidation and then boom, look at that drop. So, you know, this is kind of the market that we're in today. We're seeing these kind of moves. So we saw it on CHEK. We saw it on MDGS. We saw it a bit on JVA. Uh, we saw it a bit on, um, what, what was it, OCX. So really not seeing super, um, super clean follow through at this point. And um, I'm, I'm disappointed that, you know, my hot streak, um, you know, well, consecutive day hot streak is over. A hot streak is just a period of time where you're making a lot of money. And today I'm only down 3000 bucks. So it's really not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. If I end up having another three weeks of green trading, it'll be a six week long hot streak with one red day in the middle or maybe two red days. It's really not a big deal to have a red day. Um, it doesn't end a hot streak. It just ends a period of consecutive green days. I had 23 consecutive green days and tomorrow, you know, we'll be starting over with day one. But that's all totally arbitrary. Being a successful trader does not mean you need to have 200 consecutive green days. That's not the definition of being successful at all. So it, it's easy to get kind of fixated on these little things and to the point where they can actually distract you. And I would say um, today I was feeling, well, I was feeling a bit um, kind of, uh, I don't know, a little more frustrated yesterday that, you know, I just wasn't seeing follow through. I kept mistiming ABCO pretty deep into the red, $2,000, and then dug myself out, finished up 400 bucks. Today, I'm even more frustrated because I started red, which is irritating. I got myself up 2,500 bucks, and then on one trade, I lost it all. And then I let myself jump into MDGS really aggressively with 9,000 shares, and just, it got slammed back down. So. You know, the thing with MDGS is like, it's not like I would have had a short bias on this type of stock. You know, some people would say, well, geez, you should just have shorted everything you bought today. But, um, you know, the reality is this was squeezing up with a catalyst. It's a former runner and it's a stock with a float of about a million shares. You know, I mean, I guess realistically, when I think of this as a former runner, maybe I'm being a little optimistic because now that I'm looking back on it, I'm seeing a lot more red days than green days. I don't know why it was striking me as being a former runner, but um, yeah, that's maybe a miscalculation on my part there because I'm seeing a lot more, I mean, a couple days here and here, but I mean, this is a day went from five to seven, but, and here's the day, I guess it went from five to 10 or four to 10. So yeah, I don't know, but Maybe I was a little too aggressive and that's a tough thing. Some of these ones like LEDS, I no longer think of this as a former runner. I used to for a long time. It was a former runner and now it's just a stock that pops up and gets slammed back down. And I'd say MDGS is probably going to go into that category as well. So um, yeah, so on this one, it's not like I would have, I mean, not that you couldn't have taken a short on as it came back below three with a stop at the high of day. You certainly could have done that. Um, it's just... I typically wouldn't have a short bias on a stock with a 1 million share float on its first spike when it has a catalyst and it has a bit of a history of being a former runner. Because the risk is, you know, this looked like it was about to get halted at 320 and it's the type of stock that has the potential to go up 50 or 100% in one day. This just wasn't the day and I was wrong on it and that's fine. So I think today um, I was a little too aggressive on BOXL well, honestly, I, I'm not even going to say that. I wasn't too aggressive. It was a fine entry. It was a break of the pre-market high. It just didn't work. BOXL was fine. That was fine trade. It just didn't work. Whatever. Um, JVA was a little aggressive right out of the gates, um, but this one also is a former runner with a history of making big moves. You can see in here, you go back a little further you know, in there. So I think that I had the right idea there to be a little aggressive. I expected more of it. It really only broke the pre-market highs by like 14 cents. So I'm a little just disappointed that it didn't break out and it wasn't as strong as I hoped it would be. Um, but, you know, I, I did okay on that. I wasn't crazy, crazy aggressive. And the scalps that I took um, right in here and right in here 
Uh, we're only with 6,000 shares, so I wasn't being super aggressive there. HYRE, momentum trade off the scanner, daily breakout setup on that. I think that was okay. OCX, uh, the first trade was a really good one. The second trade was a really good one. This is a good one minute, one minute pullback, one minute pullback there. Um, the, the scalp that I tried to take at six, you know, that was a little aggressive, but um, I don't know. I, I really, I think that that was just kind of the luck of the draw, that sometimes you get a trade and it just flushes on you and you get that false breakout. This is what we would call false breakout because it hit 601, <laughs> it broke the whole dollar and then it dropped 50 cents. So it's a false breakout. It's going to happen sometimes. No matter how good you are, how fast you are, you're going to have some false breakouts. And this was a false breakout here as well. Um, but then it recovered it and got back up. So I was like, all right, it's strong. It's holding up. So I don't know. I mean, that I think was just luck of the draw, bad trade. And MDGS was probably the emotional one. MDGS is the one where I was like, oh man, I just got nailed with a $2,500 loss. This thing's squeezing up. I thought in my head, it's a former runner. I'm just going to jump right in. I bought 9,000 shares and, um, you know, it goes up to 320. It's looking good. I'm in at 86. And then it just whoosh, comes right back down to 70. And I'm like, I, you know, all right, well, one minute micro pullback. Let's see what it does. We didn't have the first one minute candle to make a new high until 251. So I held. I held, I held it way too long and ended up stopping out right here as it came back down. You know, at this point I was like, well, I'm in it. I guess we'll just see this thing through. I didn't really expect it to come back up to high a day, but I thought, you know, maybe it'll drift back up towards the seventies and I can get out with like a 15 cent loss, you know, 1200 bucks. But I knew my max loss was the low of this candle here, which was 51. And when it came back down here, I had to get out. So, you know, I don't hold these overnight. I'm not going to be a bag holder for, you know, days and days or weeks and weeks. And so today is just a day where, uh, you know, I think I, my turning point was that just bummer of a loss on OCX and then a little emotional jumping right into MDGS without really good confirmation, just buying as it was squeezing. I don't really know, you know, the headline was out at 9 a.m. and I just kind of jumped right into it as it started spiking here. You know, whoever was in this at 250 and bought my share, or I bought my shares from them at 280, 286, 290, you know, they got a nice win and I, you know, I got the bag and held it coming back down. So that's the way it goes. Uh, you know, you, you just can't win them all. This is the hardest thing with trading is dealing with those ups and downs and having a day where you go red and then you go green and then you go back red and then maybe you go back green and it's just not the cleanest action. You know, on Friday I made $8,000 and it was like clockwork. I mean, it was just easy. I came in, I did my thing, 8,000 bucks was done by 1030. That was a great day. That's so far the best day of the of the month. But uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, mostly I've been done every single day by 10:30, coming in, hitting two, three, four, five thousand dollars, done for the day. I'm going to be up about uh, 46,000 as of right now on the month, and uh, was up six uh, was up 50,000 yesterday before today, but uh, gave you know giving back just a little bit off the top. So about 46, 47,000 on the month. It's still a green month, 40K was my goal. So I've got two days left. Just try to be smart in the next two days. I hope we see some good momentum. I hope we see something go parabolic, but you know, the only thing that's really gone like super parabolic this kind of month has been MBOT and that one wasn't even the easiest one. So um, I'm still waiting for that stock to go crazy and I just gotta be patient, you know, you trade the market you're in, not the market you want to be in. And today, I think I was pushing it a little bit too hard. So I'm disappointed, but live to trade another day. That's that's the name of the game. And, um, you know, I definitely do that. So $61,000 in 23 days, being down three grand, all things considered. Doesn't matter. Really not a big deal. Be back at it first thing tomorrow. Hopefully we see some better follow through, good stocks on the scanners, and we can try to, um, you know, I don't know, just finish the day green. It's not really even about recouping today's loss 
Although the good news is that this is not a, um, this is not by any means my word, the worst red day I've ever had. Uh, you know, the worst red day I've ever had was 30 grand in the red. And the worst one last year was 16 grand in the red. And I had a day um, about a year ago where I had, I lost $7,500. And then the next morning I lost another $7,500. So I've seen some pretty deep pullbacks. And one of the goals is to have my drawdown as minimal as possible. So, you know, if I start to pull back off my highs a little bit very quickly to just be cognizant of that, adjust the risk, slow down, wait for things to start pick up. So if I have a couple days where I don't make a lot, small wins, small losers, that's totally okay. And then when things start to open up, pedal to the metal, you know, back to big share size and try to get those five, six, seven, ten thousand $10,000 days again. So that's what it's all about. All right, guys, we'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning, 9.15 pre-market analysis. Hopefully we've got another green day. All right, see you guys later. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.